This show is brought to you by Pivex Private Instant Verified Transactions. With its groundbreaking zero coin staking and masternodes, Pivex is the top privacy currency. Feel free to trade some on Binance or Bittrex. And for more information, go to www.pivex.org. Hello and welcome to ITK Crypto with me, today's host, Cryptosi. Unfortunately, we have not got our star host, Tom White, with us this this week. So I'm, I'm going to do my best to um, fill in for him. But what we do have, and I am really excited to present, is... Adbank. Now, I've been trying to get Adbank on this podcast for literally over a year. It's a very exciting project, and I'm very excited to have John Gillam with us from Adbank. So, um, John, welcome to ITK Crypto. Yeah, thanks for thanks for having us, CryptoSci, and yeah, gra- glad uh, glad to be here and excited to, to talk all things you know, crypto, digital advertising, and, and Adbank. Awesome. Okay. Well, without any further to do, could you? Tell us what is your current role within AdBank and could you tell us a little bit about your background prior to getting into crypto? Sure. Yeah. So my, my current role is is a CEO of, of AdBank. Uh, my background prior to crypto was all in the sort of online business space, so running a portfolio of sites and then became the operational arm of a private equity company that was rolling up online businesses. Um, so the when I got sort of sucked in to understand what blockchain was capable of doing, I think like a lot of us have had that, you know, crazy aha moment of holy crap, middlemen are going to be disrupted. Where are the middlemen that I understand and see a massive amount of inefficiency in? And that was in the digital advertising world from from my background. And so that that was sort of how that uh, that thread started being pulled. And, you know, many sleepless nights later, after digging in extremely deep, that was a uh, you know, call it kind of the early, early 2017 timing. Um, and so it's ever since it's been just uh, just continuing that learning journey. Awesome. So you've touched on it there, but could you tell us in more detail what exactly is AdBank and what was it built to do? Yeah, so the the digital advertising ecosystem is a mess. So, you know, you see an ad online and you don't see all the stuff that happens behind the scenes. The reality is there's a whole bunch of middlemen that exist between the advertiser and the publisher that all take a piece, contribute a bunch of value, but that entire system becomes very um, opaque and non-transparent. And so what AdBank does is provides a, a ad network that connects direct the advertisers and the publishers together with the transactions recorded on on the, the blockchain. And so that's kind of the, the protocol layer. And then we have built apps on top of that okay and i'm assuming my next question is going to feed in nicely to the apps portion or perhaps um could you tell us what is blade yeah no exactly that that's one of the the main sort of the apps that are on top so the the ad network itself is very much a b2b um solution to connect advertisers and publishers together but what we see 10 years down the road in the digital advertising world, if we're all uh, a valuable part of that ecosystem, why are we not rewarded for seeing those ads? And so if we are you know, a significant contributor to that transaction from a value standpoint, we should also be incentivized um, to see the ads, to interact with the ads, et cetera. And so what Blade is, is a Google Chrome plugin, uh, a Google Chrome extension that blocks ads and then replaces ads with ads served on the ad bank platform uh, transparently using, you know, recorded on the blockchain and you get rewarded for seeing the ads. So in simple terms, it's a Chrome extension that is simple to install that rewards you in ADB for viewing ads that you're already going to be viewing. Okay. Yes. Um, I can actually say that I have personally installed the, the, the Chrome extension. It was it was very easy to install. I'll give it that much for sure. So AdBank itself, it was a a part of the great ICO craze. I guess that's how historians will look back on it as a, <laughs> the ICO craze of 2017 and early 2018. Um, how have you found surviving what has been, to my knowledge, the most difficult time within crypto? Yeah, it's a... Uh... 
Certainly, it'll be, I'll, it will be very interesting to see how historians will look at the 2017-2018 the, the <laughs> phase. Um, it, it, was a, it was an interesting ride, that's for sure. But uh, it, all along, you know, even during that craze, um, we, we'd always talk that utility, you, like there, there shouldn't be a separate discussion between liquidity and utility. Utility should be the only thing that really matters. Um, and that, that's been our push from the start. And I mean, I think everyone that was in that phase knew that there was likely some component of, and then not there's anything wrong with it, but a bubble nature to that, to that period of time. Um, and that will spin out a bunch of useful um, solutions. We think we will be one of those useful. We, are, we think we are one of those useful solutions that has survived. So uh, we, we've had to make some adjustments certainly to our, to the roadmap in terms of what we were wanting to achieve, but we're also unique in that we have a revenue model attached to uh you know our, e- even though it is a relatively decentralized approach uh we have a revenue model attached to it that will uh will have us carried long into the future yeah well uh, the reality is a lot uh, probably the vast majority i think it's fair to say of icos that did start up between this this craze period of 2017 to 2018 the vast majority of them are already gone um and they've yep. already had to close up their doors so um it's it's a testament to you guys that you that you have made it this far and you are still developing and and ad bank is is going going well I, i'd assume so the advertising space itself um it has had a few crypto related startups most notably bat um uh i guess you could give us a, a, a brief description of what that is and then could you tell us how you feel AdBank stacks up against that, if indeed it does stack up against or, or if it complements it, or how the two um, kind of can be compared with each other? Yeah, for, definitely. Uh, yeah, there's, there's a ton that have, that have existed, and I think that shows that the other people see the same opportunity, which is, which is great. Um, and so what that does is similar similar premise similar thesis in terms of end users should be rewarded for seeing ads in this case call it their their attention and you just be rewarded for seeing for for their attention and the way that bat approaches that is with their own browser um and so we're similar to bat in that uh we reward users for viewing ads uh we're unique from bat in that bat is a browser we are a Firefox and Chrome extension. And so BAT, awesome project. I think they will achieve success or have already achieved success um, and will hopefully continue to. I think with the way we are unique and that I think there's more, there's room for us and them in the market is we don't require user behavior change. So for those that don't want to change browsers that want to stay on, in Chrome for or Firefox, um, we we offer a solution with an extension for them to still be rewarded for for the ads that they see. I see. So I guess what you're saying is that people who are using AdBank they can keep their Chrome, keep the extensions that they've got within Chrome, and still benefit from ha- having to well having to choosing to watch certain adverts. Whereas I guess if you use something like Bat, you would lose all of the Chrome functionality. Maybe not the Firefox. I'm not sure if Bat is a um, a fork of Firefox. I think it's a fork of something. The Brave browser. Do you know? So the founder of Brave was the original, or was was on the original team with with Mozilla and Firefox. And so yeah, right. there, there's a lot of uh, transferability there. Um, and then they the the Brave browser does allow extensions. Uh, so they they're built on the sort of anything that's a Chrome possible extension will also work uh, on uh, the, the Brave browser as well. Right. Okay. Okay. So there are those similarities and then, okay, right. Okay. Right. Okay. So let's, let's move on. And what I wanted to speak to you about was uh, strategic partnerships. Now, AdBank is um, like quite a few other crypto related com- companies now ha- has pursued some strategic partnerships. Now, which of these partnerships that uh, AdBank has uh, pursued are you most excited about and why? And also, how do you decide which companies you want to create partnerships with? Yeah, um, 
so the one we're most excited about right now is Veronita. So Veronita was a little late to the the ICO craze, we'll call it, in kind of late 2018. Uh, they built a extension, a Chrome extension that blocks ads and rewards users for blocking the ad. It was it had a bit of a failed concept and ex- execution in part due to timing. And so they had built up a significant user base. And then we have come to a, a partnership agreement with them where we are uh, migrating their users over to us. So they had, you know, within their database, 80,000 um, contacts and users. And uh, the extension had uh, had 15,000 active users on it. And so we we're working with them to, to migrate the users over. So there's a kind of a very direct strategic um, partnership that, that we're really excited about. Uh, I think it's uh, kind of a game changer for us. And it, consolidation is a natural outcome of, uh, you call it this, this cycle of kind of the, the ICO craze, followed by a bunch of development, followed by some consolidation. And so we're, we're excited to be on the, uh, the consolidator side, not the consolidate D D side, I guess <laughs> to say. Um, yeah. And uh, how, how do we decide if we're, uh, if, what partnership uh, we, we try and be as transparent as possible about there's some partnerships that it's just like, Hey, we're We like them. We're going to share this from this project with our community. And they're going to share this project with, with their community. And that's, that's that. Um, and so we try and be as transparent as possible and not communicate uh, false hopes in terms of we're partnering and we're going to change the world versus no, this is what it is. And this is just a simple we're going to share some information with our community about the project. They're going to share information with us and we're going to see if there's an opportunity to help each other. But, and then there's other partnerships that are longer in development that have a much more strategic component where there's kind of co-development happening. And we've got one that's also pretty exciting that is in discussions. Now we'll see where it gets to, but could, uh, could provide some, uh, some interesting benefits to the ad bank community. Awesome. Okay. So moving on, um, it does link us quite nicely. We're talking about the ad bank community. Um, let's discuss the the economics of ad bank. And um, one question I, I was quite keen to ask you, it, it, it does go for pretty much 95% of ICOs that have come out and all crypto projects really. But in terms of ad bank, what w- would you say are the main reasons for anyone to actively hold ad bank tokens? Yeah, fair, fair question, and, and I'm sure you you probably kind of expect some of the answer. But with uh, we are Canadian based, and we we do ensure that we comply with all potential laws in Canada, so we don't it limits some of the topics we can talk about. Um, but but happy to try and try and answer that question as detailed as possible while staying on the right side of uh, of any kind of SEC or OSC uh, <laughs> yeah. laws. But uh, it, the the Utility component of ad bank tokens is that you end up being rewarded for seeing the ads that uh, you're um, viewing. The roadmap development that we have in place. So let me let me maybe back up and try and try and explain how the ad bank token works, and then that'll that'll help answer some of the question as well. And so uh, advertisers come on. Uh, buy the token on a secondary exchange, come onto the ad bank platform, um, fund ads fund an ad campaign that ad campaign runs the end user the publisher and ad bank receives a component of of that the end result is that many thousands of users receive small amounts of adb and so you're taking a sizable chunk off of the secondary exchange running it through the ad network running it and then a bunch of small users are, are going to receive small components and so that in- will ultimately reduce the velocity because of the fracturing nature of it. And uh, then the end user holds and sees and has the ad bank. And then we've got some uh, some stuff that we're exploring that gets it even more exciting where they're rewarded for the ads that they see proportional to the amount of ADB that they have in their wallet. Now that's something that we may or may not ultimately be able to develop, but that's uh, something that gets pretty exciting for us. Yes, I guess that changes the economics of it drastically. If uh, if you're rewarded more for being a higher holder, 
that definitely does change the economics of of ad bank that's a very interesting have you um have you got any idea of um maybe a, a time scale i know it's a very difficult thing with with uh, development but a time scale for when you would know or come to a decision or implement something like a um it would look like st- we're calling it proportional rewards because it's not it's not truly staking. Um, yeah, awesome. <laughs> That's what I was yeah. looking for a, a term. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, and so yeah, the the proportional rewards is, has a lot to do with the um, uh, the legal landscape. Te- the technical landscape isn't the the technical challenges are are achievable. It's the legal landscape of what what does this mean for the token now that we have proportional rewards does that change the uh definition of it from a from you know what a utility or currency into a security and so we're that that's what we're wrestling with and we are unfortunately in a bit of a waiting game to uh see how things play out on the legal side with other projects that are currently being so like the the kin um, which I'm following closely with, uh, with how SEC is treating it. Um, so timing unclear. Uh, would love to would love to have a clear answer for 2020, but I'm 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 cautiously optimistic that that will happen. Yeah. So basically, what you're saying, um, and it's it's the same all over crypto, I guess, is that the waters are extremely muddy, where a lot of people don't know what they are allowed to do and what they're not allowed to do so you mentioned another project called kin are they currently going through a legal battle or are they consulting lawyers so that they can make a statement maybe before the fact this podcast has been brought to you by rhubarb media rhubarb media are the branding specialists behind successful crypto projects such as pivx vendable and libertaria the rhubarb style is both loved and respected the world over So if you want your project to appeal to techies and everyday users alike, give Rhubarb Media a try. You cannot possibly be disappointed. Link is in the description. Yeah, no, they're they're currently uh, currently. I'm not sure what the right term is at what stage they're at, but they've been quite public. Um, They're a Canadian Canadian project um, and have been quite public with their legal status with the SEC. Um, and yeah, the, they they were one of the first ones to do a full kind of KYC ICO back in kind of August 2017, and the the SEC has gone after them with some uh, some vigor, and they're one of the projects that have decided to uh, stand up and stand up and fight. And, and so it's I think it's going to uh, that that case in particular is going to really shape how all the other projects at the time will view their their token yeah good luck to them yeah absolutely so um i'll move on wanted to ask you something about the code behind ad bank so ad bank is one of the few crypto related projects that is closed source um could you explain to our listeners what it what it means to be closed closed source and can you explain why ad bank has taken this particular measure to protect its software Sure. Yeah. So, so it's, it, it's, we've taken the measure mostly to protect the, the community has been sort of our, our approach. Um, so we have a bunch of pieces of the software, which are, which are open source, which we have contributors helping with. And so the difference between open source and closed source is open source. Anyone can come in and help contribute to the project. And so we have some parts of that, that let, help the, that allow the community to come in and help support and closed source is when for whether it be security or, or, um, business reasons, you need to keep it parts of it closed source. So some parts uh, needed to be closed source at the time while we were securing and and applying for a, a patent around the machine learning component, the artificial intelligence and machine learning, monitoring of the uh, advertising transactions on the blockchain to detect fraud. So that, that part needed to be closed source at the time. Um, and then other parts are closed source to help with the anti-fraud measures that are that are in place. So really it comes down to kind of protecting the ecosystem from fraud and keeping components of that uh, closed source uh, to uh, to help with that. Anybody can come and uh, decide to spin up an ad network uh, leveraging the ad bank tech, 
both the closed source component and the open source component. Okay, excellent. Um, supposing I had a company and I wanted to uh, place a, a, a series of adverts on the AdBank network or to go out to users of the AdBank software, where would I go to place these adverts? And are there any kind of restrictions or um, how, is this, how is it censored? Who, who decides what actually goes onto the AdBank network? Yeah, so so we so to, to run that, and we have companies doing that today. Uh, AdBank.network, and and then there's instructions on on how to how to flow through that process, and then you'll be connected with our ad ops team, which is which is led by Nersis, um, in house, and and they'll get everything set up. Um, we because so anybody can take the code and with our help spin up their own network and they can and then we have no control over what they choose to or not put on that network since we are running the network so we built the tech and then we're eating our own dog food by running our own network which has blade as the significant publisher we control what ads are seen and not seen and so yeah they're the 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 usual sort of um scams pornography, et cetera, are, are not allowed on, on the network or are censored. Um, and then, but that's our decision since we're running it, but we, you know, believe in a decentralized future and, and others can take the code and run their own network and choose to run it however they see fit. That is, that's amazing. With your company, do you actually help in the creation of the adverts or just the distribution of them? So we, we try and do just the distribution, but we're happy to provide whatever support is needed to to get people on board. So especially when we're running pilots, like we've run pilots with uh, with Government of Austria and, and Red Bull. Um, and when we did that, we were supportive. We, you know, we went the extra length to be supportive to, to get them on to run the pilot. Okay, excellent. That's that, that is uh, that's really interesting. I'll I'll make it. I'll make sure to link those two sites in the description um ad bank network and what did you say the other one was uh blade.software is to, where to to install the extension right okay right well before we uh before we end the call and after the podcast what i'll do i'll get those back from from you i'll write them down and, and sure. save them so all the listeners can hear uh can sorry can check it out right so um in the future for AdBank, uh, what are the main things that AdBank plans to develop during the next year or so? What can the uh, what can the AdBank community look forward to seeing? Yeah, so the the main focus right now is on the the getting end users to install Blade and getting advertisers on the on the platform. We think that's that is the you know the key to driving utility is to drive a critical mass of users, and so that is absolutely our our number one focus right now is users made the big move recently to get to get Veronita um, and then uh, we'll have advertisers following after that. So that's that's the core focus of the business right now. From a product standpoint, it's anything that is needed to support that. So we're, you know, as user stories come in from from product, we're working on that. And then the roadmap, the bigger things on the roadmap are we have the AI built, but we need to have a critical mass to turn it on. So looking at the right timing to do that. And then the uh, proportional rewards is the other big piece that is sort of out there in the future. And we're just trying to make sure we can lock it in on a date that will, uh, will work for, for, from our legal risk standpoint and, and for, for everyone. Yeah. I think the proportional rewards is, it's definitely the, the b- biggest deal about the, uh, the economics because it really does make a, a big difference. Um, I'm going to move away slightly from ad bank now. And, um, as you're uh, a cryptocurrency professional and have been for some years, I wanted to get your thoughts on Facebook's uh, new Libra project. Um, what do you think about what Facebook is doing and how, how do you think it will affect uh, crypto, cryptocurrencies in general? I'm, I'm excited by it. I'm, uh, I mean, there's, there's always you know, pros and cons to everything. And, and I'm, not, uh, I, I'm not a deep enough expert on it to to comment with uh you know a, a certain level of authority but it's uh i i think it's going to push things to a head with uh with with regulate how how currencies are going to be reg- cryptocurrencies are going to be regulated i think it's going to uh push mass adoption 
Um, I, I'm certainly concerned that our decentralized future will look much like our current setup does from a from a control of by big, by big corporation standpoint. Um, that's the downside, but I, I'm I think it's I think it's a good thing. Yeah, I think um, if you equate the situation with what the the company you mentioned earlier, Kin, are going through, if Facebook, which they probably will, go through something similar to that, the battle will be a lot different. It's quite easy for these regulators to trample on Kin, but I think they may find trying to uh, change the rules as far as Facebook are concerned a little bit more difficult. Would you agree? I, I would agree. I mean, I think Kin, Kin's, you know, a well-funded, significant company has been around for years. And so that's why they have been able to sort of like put up a fight. Whereas I think Facebook has the ability to, t- to take the fight to them. Um, and yeah, yes. I, w- I would agree that whether it's the, r- the rules will be more defined as a result of that fight, which will help the entire ecosystem. I just hope the rules won't be um, too, uh, too favored in the in, in in for the for the kind of large incumbents. Okay, so what you what you're really saying, I guess, is that you don't want to see something like a bit license, whereby maybe they let Facebook get away with it as long as Facebook pay ten million dollars or something that will basically um, shut all of the other little guy little guys out of the conversation, regardless. Something like that. Is yeah. that what you mean? Ex- yeah, exactly. Okay. All right. So, well, yeah, I'm, I'm curious. I'm curious to hear what your thoughts are on on it. Well, for me, I'm like um, I think you hit the nail on the head with the the situ- situation that Kin are going through and how Facebook will be able to take the fight to the regulators. I think that that is the that's what I want to see. Um, I I don't particularly want Facebook to win. They've proven themselves to be bad guys as far as people's data is concerned. So they will not act um, ethically as far as money is concerned. I can't see that happening. But if, it, if it's a situation where the regulators and Facebook can just fight it out to a point where it opens doors for other decentralized technologies to come through, then I'm happy. And I'm kind of hoping that's what happens. But yeah. I guess we'll have to just wait and see. Yeah. I guess we'll have to wait and see. So, so uh, let's speak about um, Ethereum. Uh, because I'll quickly, I'll briefly explain that um, AdBank is a token on the Ethereum network. If I'm getting anything wrong, John, don't uh, don't hesitate to stop me. But AdBank is a, a token on the Ethereum network. And on the ITK Crypto, we've often discussed Ethereum's scaling issues. Now, for AdBank users and for yourself and um, an AdBank company, do you worry about Ad banks tokens and the the health, the general health of the Ethereum network as it continues to grow. Yeah, yeah. Um, a question that's existed from the start. Um, you know, the number one concern around Ethereum has been always been the the scaling um, and, and the capabilities. We made some adjustments on the tech to. Uh, try and future proof us and be anti fragile against where scaling goes. And so, what that means is people get rewarded for the ads that they see. The amount that they get rewarded is, you know, fractions, fractions of a penny per ad. And so, they, it's impossible to transfer that amount and be efficient with gas. And so, what we have is um, batch processing of transactions and a certain threshold. So, People don't get rewarded until they achieve a, a, a 10 to 1 ratio of reward to gas. And so that batching nature s- solves much of that scaling problem, um, while it also um, is a concern that if that becomes so long that people aren't being rewarded for until, you know, for four months, that that would be a problem. Um, so that that's the we, we are. We are concerned. We think the rate of solving the scalability issues will outstrip the problems that, and we think we have measures in place to to be um, flexible based on those uh, based on the, the the scaling issues. Okay, All right. So 
we're coming close to the, the end of the podcast. I'd just like to thank you again for your time. We're, we're, we're running out of time, actually. So thanks again for your time, John. But uh, before you go, there are a few questions that we ask everybody who comes on the ITK Crypto. And the main, one, the main question that we do ask everyone is, if you had to go all in on a project, which uh, means if you had to put all of the money you had in the world into one particular crypto related project, which project would it be and why? Also, the rules are you can only select a project which, which has been released and you're not allowed to choose ad bank. So which would you choose? So, so uh, Bitcoin, but uh, that's, that's probably not the, the answer that would be interesting. <laughs> um, so uh, second would be uh, bat. I, I mean, I'm a big believer in the future. Ten, 10 years time, are people going to be rewarded for the ads that they see online? I think that's a trend that is inst- that it will happen. I think blockchain is the only solution to making that happen. And I think bat has as good a shot at anyone as, of, of addressing that problem. So I think from a, from a macro um, trend standpoint, I, I like, uh, I like bats chances. Amazing. Do you know um, the answer that we get the most is Bitcoin. Um, yeah. So I'm glad you didn't choose that. I, I should change the rules to say that you can't choose Bitcoin either, <laughs> but you're actually, you're the first person who's selected what many would consider to be a legitimate rival of your own project to be the project that you would actually go all in on if you couldn't on your own. So I guess what you're saying is you're doubling down on, on the on the opportunity and, and the fact that you believe that advertising really is the place where crypto can cause a lot of disruption 100 percent. No, nothing i've seen in the years that i've been my, my confidence is digital advertising going to be disrupted with blockchain technology and is the end user going to be rewarded as part of that and, and you know i i can't i try and not predict the future but i cannot see a future where that's not the case so yeah i'd, I'd love <laughs> okay. to continue to double down on the space <laughs> awesome right okay well you've um, you, you've managed to convince me well i was i was already convinced but i'm convinced yet more so thanks for that john um where can people go to find out more about yourself and more about adbank yeah so uh be- best place to to go is adbank.network join telegram um sign up to your email list and then uh to get involved and, you know, be, uh, be a participant in the space and uh, get rewarded for seeing ads. They can go to uh, blade.software and then install the, uh, the extensions for, for Chrome and Firefox. Awesome. John, uh, thanks once again for coming on and speaking so eloquently and discussing ad bank for, for our listeners on ITK crypto. Um, for the people that are listening, please make sure that you like and subscribe and all of that other good stuff. And um, hopefully we'll be back uh, next week possibly the week after with Tom um, discussing another great project but uh, that's that's all from me so John thank you very very much awesome thank you CryptoSai appreciate it cheers this podcast was brought to you by Meros Cryptocurrency Meros is a cryptocurrency payment system that does what cryptocurrency originally intended to do be a practical and secure form of direct payment. Meros utilizes the best of current technology in a powerful new way and introduces a groundbreaking consensus mechanism called Merit Caching. This enables Meros to be both fearless and instant while maintaining the same level of integrity of traditional networks like Bitcoin. To find out how you can participate in the future of crypto payments, Go to meroscrypto.io now.